Okay, so Web 2.0, as, as the web advances, social networks become more involved. Uh, the whole world of social commerce, we'll talk about this semester. Uh, the use of blogs, uh, which started as personal web pages for posting of, uh, let's say, journal entries, are now being embraced by uh, retail organizations and e-commerce organizations, either as the voice of the brand, uh, the, the distribution brand, let's say, as uh, Walmart or, or Amazon, but also maybe certain project or product managers within that. So I could be Crate and Barrel's housewares uh, merchandiser, and I might have my own blog to help you um, uh, decorate your kitchen or, or, or fund it with them or, or, or find appliances as you're building your, your new house, your dream house. Uh, RSS is another tool that's uh, still used actively, but it's a bit geeky. It, it's an um, it's ability to have content sent uh, automatically so users can sign up for RSS feeds. Uh, retailers and e-commerce sites uh, typically allow that so they can get the latest updates on let's say specials or deals uh, through RSS. Um, it's, it's a bit geeky, so not, not all end user consumers are versant in, in setting that up, though great strides have been made by uh, e-commerce organizations and institutions to make that an easy process. Uh, podcasting, obviously, audio and, and video files uh, through things like uh, residing on an e-commerce site or on iTunes. Uh, for so such as lessons, uh, the message from the CEO, let's say product demonstrations, very big for e-commerce. Wikis, uh, you know, many companies are, are uh, beginning to use wikis and even Wikipedia to talk about their company, their product lines. So let's say Bed Bath & Beyond, Home Furnishings might have a, uh, a wiki about, uh, let's say, uh, college students uh, uh, shopping for furniture. Uh, music video services, uh, both uh, online viewing, uh, so merchandising through uh, videos running directly off of an e-commerce site or a product landing page are very big, very important. I utilize that a lot at Bye Bye Baby. So I would have lifestyle videos for uh, a set of products from, let's say, Graco Baby. So you would have a family driving in their, and then showing the car seat, they arriving at the park, take the baby out of the car seat from Graco Baby, putting him in the Graco Baby stroller, and then strolling through the park. Through the park. So uh, online viewing or digital video on demand uh, to be able to, to play that on, on your liking through uh, the e-commerce site or sites such as YouTube and uh, iTunes. Okay, so Web 2.0 features. Obviously, VoIP uh, allows uh, voice communication, so... Uh, ways this could be used. You, uh, uh, retail e-commerce uh, providers could have voice-to-voice -voice, uh, communications with customers. Think of the self-service and customer service uh, capabilities that could be utilized that way. Internet television, more and more uh, organizations are using IPTV-like services to actually put together channels. Um, so obvious examples of this you might find on YouTube or Vimeo, um, streaming services. So a, uh, a Kohl's might have, a um, uh, retailer might have a store um, or a channel that shows their latest TV quality productions utilizing IPTV to talk about their new uh, uh, houseware and appliance or uh, Back to school clothing, uh, video conferencing, telepresence, uh, tools like WebEx and Google Huddle, uh, very easy to use. Some premium level WebEx cost cost uh, enterprises money to sign up for that and pay for that. Google Huddle's free for the usage. Uh, very uh, can can handle quite a bit of uh, let's say uh, uh, users simultaneously, but maybe not the bulk that, let's say, uh, an enterprise global scale WebEx could. Online software and service, web apps running on, um, on laptops, but also on your mobile devices, things like widgets, gadgets, plugins, other types of online services. Um, 
more and more personal tools such as Siri uh, that respond to voice commands, natural language, Google Now, the ability to actually talk to your device uh, primarily on your smartphone, um, but to, you know, do searches, ask questions, look for a uh, restaurant nearby, uh, but also having situational awareness, utilizing your GPS, which is inherent in your smartphone, to say, hey, you're only a few blocks away from Wendy's, uh, are you hungry? You know, that type of thing. Um, again, mobile apps continue to explode. Um, one of the big things, and I saw this right on back in 2007 when the first iPhone came out, was that mobile users, mobile phone users, uh, will be researching products using their mobile phone. And I saw this most specifically when I was CIO of BuyBuyBaby.com, the number two baby uh, retailer, baby superstores, because my concern was that our consumers were uh, in our aisles, in our stores, using their mobile phones, seeing what the, was down the block at Babies R Us, our competitor. Um, and I also wanted our consumers to be ready when they were at our competitors, such as Babies R Us, to be able to look up our babies, Bye Bye Baby uh, prices and products and availability so they could make the purchase through their mobile phone or uh, find our location, come by, pick it up, or know that we have it at a better price or better availability. So a lot of competition here, very, very heated area, uh, very, very prominent and important part of e-commerce going forward. Uh, moving more and more, not just to smartphones, but to tablets. Obviously, iPad, Android, Blackberry. Um, and then you have the app marketplaces uh, that you're familiar with, such as iTunes and uh, Google's, Google Play, uh, Apple's App Store, uh, and, and others.